my name is Elliot Montello, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Twixter and how to get the most out of it. Uh, I'm going to be covering camera settings about how to actually uh, get the most out of your footage before you put it into After Effects and use Twixter, um, because a lot of Twixter tutorials on the internet don't really cover camera settings as such, um, and how we achieve the super slow motion shots on mine and Danny Cook's film called Incendium. Okay, so uh, first of all, what you want to do um, is when you're recording your footage, you you really really want to um, use as high a frame rate as you can because um, the more frames, obviously, the slower you're going to get it when you turn it back into 24 frames a second or 25, whatever you're working with. So for most of this um, this short film, we shot it at 60 frames a second because that was the highest we could get with uh, the Canon 7D. Um, and then from there, we took the footage uh, back into After Effects and turned it back into 24 frames a second, which then gave us a nice slow image, but obviously not slow enough for the footage you're seeing right now. Um, that obviously was using Twixter. So what I'll show you is um, if you bring in your footage inside After Effects, so I've brought in clip 19, you can import it by double clicking on the window and it will open up a little box and you can import your clips or you can just you know open up uh, your files and then drag and drop them into After Effects however you choose to do this. Um, so once you've brought your clip back into After Effects you can either um, encode it before you bring it into After Effects, I like to just bring it into After Effects and interpret the footage. Um, so usually here it will say 50 or 60 frames, whatever you're recording at, and then you just want to convert the footage back down to 24 or 25, like I said. Okay, so once you've done that, just drag your clip and make a new timeline. Okay, and you want to trim off all the excess rubbish beforehand. So I'm looking at the camera for a long time before I actually uh, fire breathe. So we're going to go right to the point just before I spit the uh, power fin at the flame and just trim it off or um, just drag the clip to whereabouts you want it to start from uh, and then go to the end so after I've breathed the fire and trim it again okay so uh, once you've done that and you've got just the little bit of clip you want you then want to bring these little things down to here so that or you could just press uh, like B will bring it down to where you want it and N for the end one Okay, so uh, and then just trim your comp to work area so it brings it back so it's just the right size for what you need. Okay, um, so from here you want to pre-compose this layer so you can either go Control shift c uh, I don't know what that is on a Mac but um, I'm sure you can work it out. Um, or you can just click layer and pre-compose. So we call this slow motion, clip one, Okay, so once you're inside the new comp, you've moved all the attributes, you didn't leave them, you've moved them all to a new comp, we then want to apply Twixter. So we'll go down, and uh, obviously you've got Twixter, Twixter Pro, and Twixter Pro vectors in. Um, I'll possibly cover vectors in in this tutorial, or maybe in a separate one, because it's quite lengthy and complicated, but I did use that inside of uh, the film to really give it its extra bit of oomph. Okay, so uh, we're just going to Twixter because um, most people have this, most people have played around with it. So um, once you've applied it to your clip, uh, you want to change it back to the correct frame rate. So obviously here it's saying 29.97, you want to go down to 24 or 25, whatever. Um, and then you want to just check that all your settings are correct. So obviously the color source will have to be our slow motion clip. Um, your alt motion source is fine, leaving it none. Okay, now with um, with your motion vectors, you want to just leave it at best. Um, or, I mean, you can go to high depending on your clip, but you can just mess around with that setting. Uh, you know, sometimes for other things, maybe not fire and water, because they're one of the most complicated things to twister, unfortunately. Um, but maybe if you're someone jumping off a building or something, you might want to just turn it to high. Um, okay, so. Motion sensitivity is usually all right left at 70, but I like to turn it up to about 80%. Um, and 
then we can get started. Okay, so at the beginning of your clip, you want to apply a stopwatch keyframe and then hit U on the keyboard to bring up uh, all your keyframes for the composition. And then scroll forward to uh, where the action's happening, where you want it to start becoming slow. Um, and we'll go to about this frame here, that's pretty good. And uh, then you want to apply another keyframe, still of 100%. And then scrub forwards one or two frames, depending on how fast you want the slow motion to come in. Uh, and I always like to drop it down to about 2% first, to really see how slow I can push the clip. So I'll scroll forwards and see if there's any really, really bad warping of the clip. Okay, it doesn't seem to be anything wrong here. So uh, that should work for this clip. And then what we'll do is we'll apply another keyframe, still at 2%, and then we'll go forwards a little bit and apply it back up to 100%. Okay, so that now looks like this. Okay, so um, our clip's looking pretty good. Uh, as I said, I like to start at about 2%, and then if that looks mm, a bit warpy, a bit weird, um, you know, then we can start going up, say, 5%, 10%, you know, um, and just kind of go up like that really. And just, it's really, really about messing around with the clip and seeing how far you can push it, you know, before it starts to look a bit weird. So here, for instance, we've got a little tiny bit of warping around this little, um, this little particle here. So you can see it kind of just appears on the screen. Okay, and then weirdly drops down there, you know, not looking that great. This stuff's looking good, looks nice and slow, but this thing, it's really putting me off. So um, once you've got your clip and you've rendered it all out, okay, you want to bring it back into After Effects. So bring this clip in here and uh, just drop it in, okay, and then put that back into a new timeline. So there, okay. So there's that weird little particle there, okay. You want to take the <clears throat> clone stamp and just go to a place where you've got a clean frame, press, or double click on here, and hold down Alt and click. So you've got a nice bit of clean plate there. Go forward to where you can start to see it and then you just paint it out. Okay, so, and go forward a frame, paint it out. Go forward a frame, paint it out and so on. So that's how you'll get rid of this weird little sort of morphing weird particle. I don't know what you want to call it, but um, yeah, that's so that's how I cleaned up a lot of the shots. So for other shots, um, like shot, let's pick this one. Okay, so shot 15, okay. Um, you've got this happening. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And once again, it's quite similar settings. Um, you know, I've used, uh, at the slowest point, it was down to 10% because I could, really couldn't push it that far with this one. And uh, at its highest points, you know, uh, I, oh, I brought it back down to 70 at the end. Uh, so it's a little bit slower than the beginning, which is 100%. Um, <clears throat> well, what I'll do is I'll show you what happens when you really push a clip too far and it looks horrible. So we'll take this and we'll push this down to two. Okay, now you'll see, if I zoom in here, some weird warping effects at the end. Okay, you can see where the fire sort of tends to warp slightly like that, okay? Now, this isn't just because it's fire. I mean, it, you know, it's very hard because it's fire, but it'll happen with lots of things when they're passing through each other. It's where Twixter can't quite interpolate between frames and make, make a decent enough guess at exactly what will happen next in the frame. So 
from there. That's why you really need to just play around the clip and uh, you know, you can also, you can switch to the blending mode to nearest, which is very good, but it won't always work for every shot. Okay, so it's quite near there, but I mean, I, I, I prefer blend with maybe sometimes smart blur on there. Uh, if, it, if we get something like the smoke, which is going off, off the edge of the frame, that's what smart blur is for. Um, because if you don't have it on, sometimes you'll get this weird uh, morphing effect as, as something goes off screen. So you want to really apply smart blend for that. Um, and as I said with the camera settings, you want to film as a higher frame rate as you can and also with, the, with as high shutter speed as you can get away with. So for this, you know, most of the shots we shot at, um, you know, uh, shutter speed 1, 1000, you know, and we kind of went above that on some of them as well. Um, but you know it was quite dark so um you know we couldn't get away with any higher than that but that was that was fine for this because you really don't want much motion blur at all for slow motion clips because if you're looking at something like a phantom camera there's no no motion blur at all hardly um so i've showed you how to get rid of weird little uh, particles and stuff like that i mean you'll do the same thing really for other clips you can go in actually and maybe mask out the side with a pen tool and you take a freeze frame beforehand I did that for some of the clips as well. Um, and that's where motion vectors comes in, but because it's such a lengthy uh, tutorial, I'll do that on a separate one. Um, but I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. I hope it made a bit more sense now, maybe. Um, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot, bye.